Hello, my name is Brian Irway. I'm with the International Socialist Organization, one of the groups that's, that's called this. And, and small beginnings to what we hope will be a bigger and more vocal anti-war movement that has to step forth in this country because we've been quiet way too long. And interestingly, now that Trump's in the office, a lot of people who've been quiet way too long are finding their voices. That's what has to happen to the anti-war movement too. So, um, so the the way forward really is how do we get new people who are disgusted about what's happening in their names across the world, where, where the bombs are dropping in their names across the world. How do we get people who are disgusted in that to help forge a movement of opposition that goes into the schools or the colleges or the workplaces where we may, or churches or, or any places where we happen to come together and can organize with people we can talk to, how do we win them to a common movement of organizing and changing things fundamentally? And, and really, the anti-war movement has, I won't say been asleep for many years, because actually in Rochester a bunch of people have kept up the fight against the drone wars and, and so on, but for the most part, the anti-war movement we saw during George W. Bush's adventures in the Middle East is nowhere to be found now that we've got Donald Trump's adventures starting off. And the interval was Obama, where it seemed like we had somebody on our side in office. Why struggle? That was a big mistake. We let our guard down and we, we now have to re gain a lot of ground ideologically. We, we need to make it clear that we are against any time the U.S. bombs somebody else, whether they call it humanitarian or not. How can bombing anybody be humanitarian? It's a contradiction in terms altogether. We have to take a principled stand against things like that. People who support the left, the Democrats, and to, to cite the most obvious example, have been sliding into a justification of U.S. bombing other people for their own good, apparently. That's not, that's false news. <laughs> they're, they're, we have to be clear on, on, on where we stand as an anti-war movement. And, and the key idea that we put forward is, well, we don't like what our government is doing in our name. Our focus is on them, that is, as somebody put it once, the main enemy is at home. It's Trump and, and so on that we have to deal with. Doesn't mean there aren't other people who are against what we want. A world of equality, a world where bombs aren't falling, but it means that the ones that we have to focus our main attention upon are right here in Washington and Rochester and everywhere around us. So, so that, that's, that's the idea. But let's face it, the civil war in Syria is a complicated thing. The anti-war movement itself is divided in how to understand what the sides are and what side you have to be on. Are at the beginning of trying to build a movement that can understand what's going on, but we have to start from the fact of the matter that there, there's a lot of disagreement and we, there's a lot of sorting out to be done, a lot of education and debate that has to happen if our movement is going to step forward effectively. There are some portions of, of the anti-war movement who say, hands off Syria, well, the, the, the theme that, that I know I and other people in the International Socialist Organization, I'm, I'm sort of putting forward a, a particular set of ideas that, that our group calls for. Hopefully we'll have other, other representatives of groups who, if they have different interpretations, can, can get those. But, but I want to set out the idea that we want in this rally 
a stance for human liberation, a stance against the suppression of the revolutionary wave in, in the Arab world that started with the Arab Spring in 2011. We see our ideas in continuity with the people overthrowing the leaders that they hate. And therefore, we don't take the position that we support the government of Bashar al-Assad, even though he's fighting against the U.S. and what it wants to do. We, we stand basically for, at the ISO, for the Syrian revolution, the uprising of the people, and down with the butcher Assad. Nonetheless, we also are together in an anti-war movement with forces who say, U.S. hands off Syria. What are you doing bombing another country? How can you possibly justify that? And those people are taking the position that we are against what the U.S. is doing because we think what Assad and Russia and so on are doing is okay. They are the side of the camp to support. Although we don't agree with that assessment, we are together with them in saying, U.S. out of Syria, hands off Syria. Our focus on the U.S. being responsible for so much of this brings us together with them on that. We have a debate about who to support in the Syrian revolution. We'll take that debate together with them as, as we work together against U.S. imperialism. We had to build a movement that can sort its ideas out and debate these things through and come together to fight the real enemy, the main enemy, which is at home. We'll I, I look forward to a lot more discussion and initiatives like this because I'll tell you what, Trump isn't going to stop here. We'll, we'll be down either here or other places protesting what he's doing again and again. We have to build our movement much bigger. We have to find more people who care about what is going on in our name by the U.S. government. Who we're killing and bombing in our name. We have to take that stance. And I hope this becomes a starting point today of us doing it. Thank you everyone for being out here.